What up world, this is the goal net. As you can see here from the screen, we are taking a look at the Premiere 2 demo set that I was fortunate enough to receive. Really excited to wear this gear. I actually wore uh, Coho and Reebok gear for quite a long time before moving to Brian's a few years ago. And it's been a while, so it kind of feels like a homecoming and I'm really excited to get this gear out on the ice. Unfortunately, life's gotten a little bit in the way and uh, may not be a couple weeks until I'm able to do that, but wanted to create a video giving you a preview of the gear, go pretty in depth and hopefully get everybody looking at this gear and learning more until we can get out on the ice and put it through its pace. So what we will do in today's video is dive into this gear. We are not gonna compare it to the TGN by Optic Spec gear or any of the other gear that I have hanging around the house, like a 1S stick or the Warrior CR1. We'll save that at a later date and create some more in-depth content comparison videos. But for the time being, let's take a look at this gear. So first things first is the graphic. Anybody who's been following the Instagram account has seen me post in the Instagram stories a lot of the different designs that I thought about trying to get here. I'm a huge fan of solid colored pad screw, or at least graphics with minimal white in them. I just kind of hate the state that hockey's at where a lot of the graphics are white with just a splash of color here or there. And my goal is always to be more creative and come up with something a bit more fun. However, when it came to designing these gra this graphic and playing with the editor, I had a lot of fun doing it. However, I couldn't really get the pads to speak to me unless I added some white and I'm really happy with how the design turned out. I was really trying to force myself to, you know, use my standard mostly red colorway and come up with something that just wasn't working for me. So I took a breather, added some white, mixed in some of the Vegas gold and I'm ecstatic with how this came out. It's kind of funny, um, you know, kind of looking through some emails trying to remember when the exact delivery date this gear was coming in. I looked at them and I'm like, oh boy, I hope that looks good just because it's kind of an, again, an unusual color scheme, even though it perfectly matches our jerseys, which are cream with red. So really, really excited with how this turned out. These pads are made offshore. This is a standard retail pad um, with any of the custom options that any person could order. And I used a mix of speed skin and red weave for the graphic itself. So as you can see diving in, the red there is the weave and then the gold and the white is both the speed skin. And as you can see, that has a different texture compared to standard Gen Pro. And that's what gives the pads the ability to slide faster than standard materials. Here's a close up look of how it came out on the glove. There it is on the blocker, and we'll take a look at the stick a little bit. So yeah, we'll focus on the stick a little bit later and just really try and focus in on the gear now. And one of the other notes on the customizer is the, uh, the glove, I think, was the only graphic part where I wasn't able to just design the pads and then hit apply to all. And to kind of make the glove best match, I forgot exactly what I ended up doing actually just came to me as I'm talking, so it's phenomenal. So on the standard customizer, it actually wanted to make this piece of the trim gold, but I thought that was a bit too much gold compared with the rest of the design. So I isolated this part of the color zone editor on ccm.com and made that white. And I think the glove came out perfectly and really matches the pads really, really well with the white with the gold trim. And then the main area red weave. So we'll start off with the specs, taking a look at the blocker. So generally speaking, the Premier Series and the EF Series have basically been the same blocker with different graphics on it, but that's changed up a bit this year. The Premier 2 blocker is actually different from the EF blocker. And if we look at the changes, first things first, here is the new sidewall and finger padding. Really obvious to tell if it's an actual Premiere blocker or an EF style blocker with the Premiere graphic, and that's these two pieces of lace here, which connect directly into the finger protection. So that's, if you've ever seen me point this out on Instagram with a green bubble, that's one of the keys for telling the difference. 
The other new piece of tech on this blocker here is the cuff. And this is the stock cuff that will be stock on the retail model. So this is CCM's one piece cuff. However, what's changed between an old version is an old version of the one piece cuff uh, would have a slit right there with some lacing. This is all one piece and to do the adjustability, you have the Velcro right there inside the sidewall. So the blocker is absolutely stock as it would be ordered in the store. This has got the sure grip coating and the D3 O in the finger. So as you can see, fresh gear, haven't even taken the tags off yet. So as we dive in again, there's the sidewall, got the lacing, the new increased finger pad, got the heavy duty blocker finger padding. as well as you've got the wraps on the fingers. You've got the D3O in the finger there. And we'll try and get this on camera. It's actually really nice soft padding too. So you've got the hard foams right there in your fingers. And then behind that, there's actually some really plush uh, padding inside the blocker there, which is really nice. Take a look at the nose, we've got the red weave. And again, this white is the speed skin and that CCM logo is actually embossed onto it in black. TGN embroidery. And the reason for this cuff design is it's supposed to give the blocker a new connected feel. So I personally like my wrist loose and my palm area tight and the palm is nice and snug and I kind of have the adjustability here. So without a chest pad on, without stopping pucks, it feels pretty good where it is. So if I want to go wider with it, I can make it very, very wide and effectively almost make it like it's a half cuff or a more open cuff. Or if I decide to tweak and want to feel a bit more connected at the wrist, I can bring the blocker in and make it even tighter. So very, very easy adjustability. You saw how quick I did that. And the blocker feels pretty light. My hand will break the scale out a little bit later and weigh it. And again, not gonna really dive into how the CCM compares to my TGN spec by Optic, the Brian's gear that I got recently. We'll do that in a separate video at a later date. The other option you can choose when looking at a CCM blocker is binding or no binding. So again, this is the stock version you'd buy in the store and it's no binding, new updated sidewall with the finger protection and the adjustable one piece cuff with Velcro. So if we jump over to the glove and take a look at it, the glove is where I started to add some custom flair to it. So CCM has one of the best, if not the best custom programs in the industry. It's a little bit different from some of the other companies in the sense that they may not do every single request that you ask, but they do have a phenomenal spec sheet of things you can order that they do all the time. They deliver on them in terms of producing a product that works well and is effective because these are all options that they built for years or are used regularly in the NHL, they're not gonna be a one-off for you. So I'll show you in a second inside the glove, but this is my first um, crazy option I went with on the CCMs. Let's take a look at the back and the side. One other interesting note, whenever you see the stitching, um, so the powered by Lefebvre is stitched in, that means this was built in one of the offshore factories. If it was an NHL glove, it would actually have nothing there because the NHL limits how many logos you can put on a glove and you're only allowed three. So this would count as like a fourth logo. So that is off. And then any of the gear in the CHL or the NCAA that is made in the Canadian Lefebvre factory will have this sewn on as a patch. So fun little fact right there. If you're ever buying any used gear or anything like that and want to verify the authenticity, it will not have the stitching there if it's made in the Canadian factory. So this glove is the 590 brake. It's got the D3O inside the palm and it's got the game ready brake. I use both an actual Coho 580, uh, Reebok P P1 branded 580, and then a 585, which was a 590 with 580 graphic. So I've used a bunch of different uh, Lefebvre style gloves over the years with different branding. And I was really on the fence about going with the 580 or the 590. 
They close fairly similarly. The 580 is a little bit bigger glove and a little bit more perfectly fingers oriented. And with the 590, because I find it to be the most comfortable and I don't have the biggest of hands, so being a little bit more um, compact catching glove, I find that it's a little bit more natural on my hand. I went with the single T, even though stock will be double T at retail because I prefer that snap feeling of the puck actually hitting into the palm. And I've never really had an issue where my glove pocket wasn't wide enough and I felt it was causing pop outs or anything like that. So I went with the single teeth primarily for feel. One thing I did change out though was the skate lace. Went with the skate lace over the standard lace, big fan of that. And I find this combination for me is great because I get the, that feeling when the puck hits the tee and that nice soft feel when I need it on the lacing. And if you look at the depth, this is a monster pocket. One of the custom options I had on this was the plus one T. So if we go back inside the glove and open it up, you'll notice something that's a very, maybe even not well known that this is available as an option, but for people that do know, it may not be the most commonly purchased item. This is the leather strap behind the wrist instead of the standard nylon strap. So the reason I did this is that I really fell in love um, with a more secure wrist strap using some of my Brian's gear. And Scott Darling used the leather strap before he went to the BOA system. So kind of hearing that gave me the inspiration to try this. And again, um, really liked going away from the nylon strap. As you can see, pretty easy to put on. I try and not take my glove off at all once it's strapped on and I'm on the ice, so I don't really feel that it'll be a hindrance compared to a nylon strap. And being that it's a leather strap, it also shouldn't move, or sometimes the nylon, when you sweat, you know, things can kind of loosen up. Leather strap, once the strap itself's broken in, isn't really gonna move. And here's the game ready palm. As you can see, glove closes up perfectly. I know the Pro Palm is probably one of the most commonly ordered options, but from my standpoint and talking to the reps, and this goes outside of just the people at CCM, nearly every goalie in the NHL is using a game ready palm for games. And I mostly play games, so I think it only makes sense that I go with the game ready palm. And honestly, Breaking in gloves really isn't that much fun. So getting something like this that I can wear out of the box, close it, I could go skate tomorrow with this and feel confident that I'd be able to catch is where I'm at. Obviously, if you're in a position where you're playing a high level of hockey still and getting tons of shots, you may want to practice palm. Or if you have the ability to get two gloves, which is very common, you see, you know, basically junior NCAA guys on up going with that. Getting the practice palm for practice and the game ready for games is definitely the way to go. But again, when we look at this, this closes very nicely. You can see the D3O inserts will be here inside the palm. And in terms of continued breaking, um, and I just slid my hand out as well without undoing the leather strap. Probably not a good habit in the future because I want to keep that strap tight and secure. But for today's video, it's okay. But in terms of glove breaking, um, as you saw, it closed really nicely. Um, just need to kind of get it set in that open position. So between uses, I will put something in the glove to hold it nice and open. I actually found a kid's wrench, uh, plastic toy wrench works really, really well for that because it's adjustable and you can actually push the glove open little bit by little bit as the glove starts to set in the open position and really get that nice wide open shape that you want to get. So here we are back at the pads. And for anybody who hasn't worn CCM gear personally, you may have hear it's a little bit more of a traditional design when we talk about the Premier Series, or it may have been a tad heavy going through the Premier 1. Premier 2 is CCM's lightest pad ever, so keep that in mind. They're not oblivious. There's a reason that they're the number one company um, in goalie equipment at retail, and that about 50% of the NHL wears their gear. It's because it's a very nice combination of consistency, product quality, and also performance. And as the gear has gotten lighter and lighter, CCM has made the adjustments to make this gear lighter. 
So I want to say it's a 34 plus one pad um, with all the standard options is actually under five pounds. But as you start tweaking pads, you get taller pads, a little bit tough to stay under that five pound mark. So we'll throw these on the scale in a little bit and see where they came in at and also go through some of my specs. As I mentioned, I haven't even taken the tags off. One of the cool things is that, you know, CCM really pioneered the kick out um, of the rebounds in terms of gear design and talking about it so that people are looking for it when they go to buy gear in a store. And I wanna say that was on the XLT. That's continued through with the P4, or excuse me, with the Premier 2, which has the max rebound technology. And this material swatch of foam is actually what the Max Rebound foam is. This isn't just some generic, um, you know, marketing sample. So as the puck hits that, it's supposed to be a very, very hot rebound. That's obviously something that we won't be able to test out until we get out on the ice, but really looking forward to that. New on the Premier 2 will be the Speed Skin. This is a material that debuted on the Extreme Flex 3. I'm just trying to get the camera set though so you can see. I know I showed it earlier in the video, but the Speed Skin has uh, a little bit of a texture to it, which is what gives it the sliding ability. So anywhere that's white or the Vegas Gold on this pad will have that. So here is the inner edge. Pretty classic Premier Series with the rounded roll there. There is no seam or binding anywhere that will touch the ice. And the bottom of the inner wrap is wrapped in the speed skin. Got a nice beefy knee block there as well with the extension. So for the specs on these pads, 35 plus one and a half, same size as my Optic. Uh, my last set of pads from the Lefebvre family were RBK P1, and those from memory were 35 plus one, so these are about a half inch taller. So we'll see how these perform on the ice and how they fit when I actually get the opportunity. In terms of other new features on the Premier 2 series itself is the boot. The boot on the P2 is supposedly much softer than the P1. Fortunately, I don't have both pads in house to show you, but we'll definitely do some flex test for you. As you can see, that's a fresh pad out of the box, still with the tags on it. And it moves really, really well. And if you are somebody that wants a firmer, stiffer boot, as I mentioned, CCM has one of the most developed custom programs and one of the options is a stiffer boot where you'll get some additional foam in that area, high density foam, uh, that'll minimize the flexibility in the boot area for people that want a stiff, stiff pad. So as we go through my specs, um, we'll start at the top. As you can see, I got the completely open knee. I don't have the knee flap here at all to move the Velcro up and attach it, and I don't have any of the material here on the front of the knee, so this is a wide open knee cradle. This is the new P2 landing gear, which we've seen pictures of on the internet. It's a mix of very soft and squishy, so it should be nice and gentle on the knees when we go down, but it does have just a little bit of grip to it, so when we are in the butterfly position, the RVH position, anything like that, it should have a very nice connected feel. And this has actual three-dimensional ridges on it. So as you can see, those are the ridges that your knee actually lands on. So this got the double elastic strap, and this was a nice surprise when these came in too, because in the customizer, it just shows all the straps being red, or excuse me, being white and not red to match the rest of the pad. So I was pretty excited to see these come in as red. So as we go down the pad, we'll see the new Premier 2 quick motion strapping system. So on the outside that connects the pads, we have a nylon strap here. This is not uh, elastic, so it's not going to stretch. This is a nylon strap. Reason for the nylon strap is that based on the research CCM has done, 
is that having the nylon strap here actually makes the pad react better and can actually get the puck or the pad to snap down to the ice. Going from memory, I want to say about one puck width faster um, than some of the other competition strapless pads designed that use elastic. So theoretically, if you have these strapped correctly, you might save one more puck a game or get down again faster so pucks aren't slipping under your pads. So definitely excited to test this out and see if I find that to be the case for myself. It's a really cool concept. Um, obviously, I think it's a little bit tough quantifying that, you know, just going out there and playing with it myself, but I love hearing the science. I love that it's something that's been tested and that CCM and their educational partners are actually looking at that and testing that and not just removing straps for the sake of removing straps. So if you go inside of the rest of the quick motion strapping, we can see that there is, we can see that there is an elastic strap up around the upper calf and then no strap lower. This one, however, is elastic and will give you can see there's the quick motion branding on the Y strap. And then out here is the elastic and the Velcro for how you'll actually put this pad on. So it should be super easy to strap on. So you're basically gonna, as you put this pad on, unvelcro that around the calf, bring the knee Velcro down. go through the Y loop. So that was one handed and that took me about three seconds. So definitely gonna be quick strapping as well for anybody that hates fumbling around with straps or there's some other strapless pads in the market, unfortunately, that may be a very nice design from performance standpoint, but do get a little bit cumbersome actually putting them on and off in the locker room. So this is super simple. So nice intuitive for ease of use as well as functionality with the research signs. So this is another area um, where my custom options might vary a little bit from the retail pad. And that is that the retail pad will come with CCM's loose fit leg channel. I like a snugger pad, so I went with the tight fit. The tight fit has longer wraps on it, so that option actually adds a little bit of weight to the pad. So it'll be curious to see how much weight that adds when we actually get it on the scale. And again, any numbers you'll see published in any of CCM's marketing research will be based on a shorter 33 plus one or 34 plus one pad. So I've got a 35 plus one and a half. So I've got at least an inch and a half of additional material in my pad. Additional material adds additional weight. So this is going to be over five pounds, I'm pretty sure. But again, I think it's gonna be right in there with where most of the pads on the market, but we'll save that for last. In terms of other specs on this pad, this is the internal double brake, pre-curved. So as you can see, it's got a nice classic S shape right out of the box. But on the outer roll, what will be stock is a single brake, and I went with no brake. And the reason I did that is that I want my pad to flex vertically. I don't really want it to twist side to side. You've probably heard me say that if you've watched any of my other videos, but let's take a look. So as you can see, the boot we looked at earlier is flexing pretty well. So it is stiff, but the pads are flexing pretty, pretty well. So just to do a recap on the pads. I know we went through a lot there in a fairly quick amount of time, but again, there's gonna be more videos to follow. Pad specs are 35 plus one and a half. They are the stock uh, retail version of the Premier made in the offshore factory. They will feature the new enhanced rebound with the max rebound foam technology. It's got the new quick light uh, core, which is lighter than the previous Premier one or any of the other CCM pads in the market. It's got the new softer boot. It's got the new quick motion strapping system, the new knee landing. And again, for my custom specs, I went with the tight fit the double internal brake, the pre-curve S-curve, and no external brake. So as we look to wrap today's video up, we're gonna break out everybody's favorite accessory, the scale. All right, well that 
searing out. Let's grab a blocker. All right, so it's set in pounds and we're at zero. So that is coming in at 1.75 pounds. So one and three quarters pounds or just a little bit over a pound and a half for the blocker. So the glove is coming in at 2.541, so that's two and a half pounds for the glove. And here's the moment everybody has been waiting for. How light is the P2? and how much has it improved versus some of the older pads in terms of weight. And there it is, under five pounds. So that's impressive considering my pad is about an inch and a half, I think, taller than the stock CCM pad that they measured to get the sub five pound. And then I also have the tight fit leg channel, which is going to add weight to the pad because of the increased wrap volume. So between the taller pad and the larger wraps, pretty impressed that they kept this under five pounds. So again, it's close, 4.96, but that is definitely in a level playing field with where most of the competition is at in terms of pads. One thing I should point out if you're not aware of it is that generally speaking, the stiffer you make a pad, the heavier it is. And that's one of the reasons some of the older Premier models were a heavier pad is because they were designed that way. They were designed to be stiff. To make the pad stiff, they use high density foam. High density foam weighs more than light density foam. So the more high density foam you use inside a pad, the stiffer and heavier it gets. So it's pretty impressive that CCM maintained a nice, stiff, stable pad from what I can tell just flexing it. However, they were able to get under that five pound Weight limit, and again, one more time, let's uh, look at the flex. These pads between the new softer boot, the quick light core, and then my preference for the double brake pre-curve seem like they flex really, really well in the vertical direction, which is how I want my pads to flex. So that is my custom demo set for the CCM Premier 2, 35 plus one and a half pads, 590 brake on the glove, stock blocker. The last box, which was kind of a surprise, is the, for demo purposes, CCM Premier 2 twig. So let's take a look at this. So one of the first things you'll notice on this stick is the new large gray check fibers, which is CCM's exclusive Sigmatex fiber, which is an exclusive carbon fiber-like material to CCM. Aesthetically, it's pretty cool. It's got a fade into a white blade. As you know, I'm a member of the Black Tape Bandits, so Black Tape looks good on anything, but for the guys that really like to match, and girls out there, this will look really, really clean because you'll have a white blade with the white tape on it. I'm also a huge fan of using the rubberized stick texture and grip on the sticks. And in the hand paddle position, basically everywhere that there's that candy cane style stripe, you have both a mild rib texture as well as a rubber grip. So this should feel really, really nice out there on the ice. All right, so the last piece of gear to take a look at is the CCM Premier 2 Goldie Stick. We start off with the blade. We can see it's got a white paint that morphs into a open, unpainted area that's gray and shows off CCM's exclusive Sigmatex fiber. And those are those large gray squares that we see, the weave pattern for the carbon fiber here. This area here with the stripes and the rubberized composite grip is CCM's stick tack grip. I'm a huge fan of grips in this area. 
disappointed not every stick in the market has them. I feel like they're very easy to tape over for people that don't like them. And for people like myself who love them, they're great. You can get rid of tape, which can prematurely wear out blocker palms. The tape also gets kind of cruddy after a few skates, isn't that consistent, or it's a pain keeping up with it. So this is better for the blocker palms. Uh, I find the actual feel of it's better and also stays more consistent over the life of the stick. As we slide up, we'll see the Premier 2 logo, the Stick Tack logo, um, the name badge. Got my initials on that, pretty amped up about that. And the fade back into the white. So CCM is a second high-end stick coming out this year called the Premier 2. So there's gonna be a Premier 2 and a Premier 2 Pro. Should see the Premier 2 used in CHL, NCAA, and maybe even some NHL. And the Premier 2 Pro will be used in all those leagues. The big difference is that the Premier 2 Pro uses Sigma Tech throughout the whole stick, and the Premier 2 Non-Pro only uses it in half the stick. That'll be at a slightly lower price point. That will have some customization options for colors, curves for everybody at retail. And it should be uh, you know, a nice durable stick as well. So when it comes to sticks, everybody's excited to see the weight. Um, I will do a stick comparison in a little while, comparing this to a 1S, an NXG, Sherwood BPM50 and or CR1, depending on what sticks I still have on hand um, that I'm demoing at that point in time. But for today, we'll throw this on the scale and end our video. And one other thing I forgot to mention is that this is the carry price curve, his actual curve. So there's the curve and it's got a square toe. For anybody that remembers the older retail model, I uh, had a round toe. So this is actually changed and this is Price's curve with a square toe, which is what he's currently using. So we got our scales zeroed out. So got it balanced, everything's up in the air. And the weight is coming in at 1.57 pounds, so one and a half pounds for the Premier 2 stick. So hopefully everybody enjoyed today's video. This is a preview explaining all the different features and specs of the demo gear that I got for the CCM Premier 2. And again, don't sleep on Premier 2. This is CCM's lightest pad, definitely their most innovative pad ever with the quick light core, the max rebound, quick motion strapping, and really excited to try the leather strap inside the glove. That's a pretty cool option that I've only seen, never had the option to use, but after getting the BOA, I've realized that there's some different alternatives to nylon straps, so really looking forward to getting that out on the ice. And lastly, when I get a moment, I will do some other videos comparing um, these to the TGN spec, and as I mentioned, depending on what sticks I have on hand at that point in time, definitely do a stick comparison. So should make lots of great content with this CCM Premier 2 gear and hopefully help educate and answer people on a lot of their questions. As always, head over to thegoldneck.com to ask for questions um, and take the conversation deeper by joining our free community. Thanks.